So first things first, the Modern Warfare campaign. Honestly, one of my favorite Call of Duty campaigns of all time. I think they knocked it out of the park, and the ending is a little bit confusing. There's a bunch of Easter eggs in there, and I think things that can be definitely explained better than they were at the actual end of the game. And that is what today's video is all about. So before we dive into it, I just gotta say, spoiler alert, there is some massive, massive spoilers if you couldn't tell by the ending explained thing. Um, there's Easter eggs I'm exposing. There's a lot of things we're going to be talking about that if you haven't played the campaign, you might not even understand. So I suggest either playing the campaign or I also have the campaign uploaded to my channel. Watch through that whole thing, hear the whole story, and then hear this breakdown afterwards. But without further ado, this is the ending of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 Explained. So first things first, to fully understand the Modern Warfare campaign, you have to understand who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. So essentially, there are four good guys and four bad guys. The four good guys consist of Alex, the CIA agent, Captain Price, we know who he is, Feyre Karim, she is the one who is from Yurzikstan, she kind of leads the militia in Yurzikstan against the bad guys, and finally you have Kyle Garrick, who is kind of like the new guy on the crew, who Captain Price has kind of taken under his wing. So then we have the four bad guys, the first of which is the most obvious, the one you're fighting throughout the entire campaign. He is none other than Roman Barkov. He is Russian, and basically his role in this game is invading Yurzikstan, trying to take them over. Then you have the Yurzik militia, who is fighting against that. This is, of course, led by Fera Karim, as we talked about before. Now, the second bad guy is the wolf, a.k.a. Omar Suleiman. He actually used to lead the Yurzikstan militia, but thought that their techniques weren't extreme enough fighting Roman Barkov, so he switched over to al Qatala, the terrorist force. He then fights against the Yurzikstan militia and against Roman Barkov's forces, and he's also a bad terrorist who likes using dirty bombs and everything like that. He is also a bad guy. The third bad guy is the Butcher. Now, you see him several times throughout the campaign. He essentially does the wolf's dirty work. He gets in there, kills a bunch of people. He's a bad guy, and that's really all that you need to know about him. And then finally, the most confusing one, you have Hadir Karim. He kind of flops between a good guy and bad guy. Throughout the entire campaign, he is working with Farah. However, he kind of snaps a little bit and decides that, once again, the Urzikstan militia isn't going extreme enough against Roman Barkov. So he actually ends up working with the wolf and al Qatala to do some of their dirty work. In fact, he even is the one at the beginning of the campaign that takes the chlorine gas for al Qatala. So essentially throughout the campaign, your job is to take down these bad guys. Now, early on, you end up capturing the wolf and you take him to an embassy. Now, he ends up escaping this by you having to take him to a safe house and then the al Qatala terrorist forces blow him out of there and steal him from you, essentially. They breached the wall. Fucking hell. They got him, Captain. We will find him. Hadir, get your team to the crossroads. Bring everything you've got. Yes, sister. What's the plan, Farah? Now, in the very next mission, at the end of it, you find out that the one who stole the chlorine gas at the very beginning of the game was none other than Hadir Karim, trying to work alongside al Qatala terrorist forces and using this gas against Roman Barkov. <coughs> Now after this, the mission is to track down Hadir and the wolf, and they very quickly actually manage to do so, working through some trenches, and eventually, they end up at this. Timer, he has a vest. There is no escape. This is the end. Your brother needed help. He has big plans. Killing me cannot stop him. Even I cannot stop him now. It is too late, Commander. He has a remote. Still counting.
And just like that, the wolf is dead. We found out that Hadir has big plans with the chlorine gas. We have now taken out the wolf, so we are now left with three bad guys. Captain Price's next step is to team up with an old friend, that is right, Nikolai, to hunt down the butcher. Now, in the next mission, they actually manage to do so and end up holding him hostage. Now, the next thing that they do is pretty dark. They end up using his wife and kid to torture the location of Roman Barkov and Hadir Karim out of him. And just like that, another one of the four bad guys is off the street. Now we're down to two. And as it turns out, Hadir Karim has tracked down Roman Barkov to his residence and is planning on going there and killing them. So, you follow. And eventually you track Hadir down and find out that the reason why he's at Roman Barkov's residence is to get the location of the gas facility that Roman Barkov has. Now the one part of this story that I don't like is Captain Price immediately takes Hadir Karim back on his side and once again Hadir is a good guy. So for those who are counting, three of the four bad guys are taken out and we are left with Roman Barkov. So this is where things start to get a little bit confusing. The next mission you go and attack Roman and Barkov's gas facility and after infiltrating it and getting into the gas room the plan was to plant explosives and remotely detonate it however as you find out here the remote detonator somehow broke along the way because of this poison my people have known something worse than war I did not come this far to turn back I'm not asking you to turn back I'm asking you to give me the order I won't do that commander please I am not your CO then who is because someone needs to light this fire and someone needs to kill Barkov. And you can't do both. I've been an assignment my whole life. This is what I believe in. Give me the order. You are a freedom fighter, Alex. You're a born leader, Farah. Say the word. Yes, ma'am. So Alex is essentially sacrificing himself to blow up this gas facility. And just as you think Roman Barkov is going to escape the facility, we find out Farah has different plans. You Here, Father. Still a long time ago. Your country breeds terrorists. That's why you're here. Do you see it now? I was trying to protect Russia. I was trying to st stop this. Now I see. I... No! This is for my family. This is for Hadir. And just like that, Roman Barkov is dead and his facility has been exploded. But inside of it is, of course, Alex. And assumably, he's dead. But you gotta remember, whenever you see a movie where they don't actually show you a character dying, you never know. And you would assume that's the end of the story. Four bad guys up, four bad guys down. But as it turns out, there's a scene that is very important right at the end of the game. Yeah, well, I'm a long way from a proper pint. Russia disowned Barkov. Well, they didn't have much choice, did they? He's dead. 
You took a big bite out of that problem, John. For now. We're left unchecked. It won't be. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. What exactly is this about? A task force. Mm -mm. We already have loose ends. Then I will tie them. I can fund assets, not outlaws. Enjoy the tea, then. Sakaya wants Barkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat with Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. Lovely family. They're big fans of hot tears. Well, that would explain why he's still alive. They're gonna get him out. They give me what I need. Who's your crew? Sergeant Garrick. Kyle? They call him Gaz. He never said anything. John Octavish, SAS, sniper, demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. <laughs> there he is. Simon Riley. There's no picture. Never. Now the rest. That's neat to know. Unless we got a deal. What are you calling this task force? One for one. And boom, just like that, Task Force 141 is back. So if you don't know what Task Force 141 is, back in Modern Warfare 2, it was kind of like a joint operation between the SAS and the United States Marines come together to work together and do these joint Task Force operations. Now, oddly, at the end of the campaign, they show you this Polaroid picture here that is oddly reminiscent of the Task Force 141 picture from the end of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now, there's also a ton of references to other characters in Modern Warfare games as well starting with sergeant gary kyle they call him gaz he never said anything so it turns out this entire time kyle garrick has actually been gaz now the weird part about this is gaz was in call of duty 4 modern warfare as a white guy and now kyle garrick is a black guy but obviously they are the same character just in a different storyline remember that these games are not attached they are in separate universes just with similar characters now this actually makes sense. Other than him being white in one game and black in another game, you never actually knew Gaz's full name in any of the other Call of Duty games. He was just Gaz. And now we know that Gaz's full name is Kyle Garrick. John Octavish, SAS, Sniper, Demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. So very clearly here, they are setting up for a second Modern Warfare game with Task Force 141, and as we can clearly tell by this, Soap McTavish is going to be a part of it. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if these characters are also going to come to Spec Ops, but we're going to get there in a minute. <laughs> there he is. Simon Riley. There's no picture. Never. So Simon Riley, a.k.a. Ghost. So they kind of make a joke there about him being a ghost, never having a picture related with him. And obviously, he's going to be making a return as well. Now, why is this all important? Well, as it turns out, there is another cutscene at the very end of the game telling us about the story going into Spec Ops. Here it is. <laughs> under evacuation. alcatala has got complete control. This place was nice once, but well, it's not anymore. East and West rebuilt Verdansk after the Cold War. Aki didn't like that cooperation. Now they've got armor 
Heavy weapons. Terrorists with tanks. Who's at the helm? Someone new. Nice hit. What's his name? We don't know, but he's got friends in high places. This is Russian intel. Where did we get this? My counterpart in Moscow. The CIA working with the FSB. Not the first time. Kamarov. Captain Price. Nikolai. You've been a bad boy. From you, that's a compliment. Please. We're all friends here. I owed you for Beirut. Sergeant Kamarov is going to help conduct this operation. These new weapons give Alcatel the power to turn acts of terror into acts of war. That's the problem for everyone. We're launching a multilateral force to hunt AQ's new leader and contain this threat while we still can. OK, we're in. Start up your teams. Let's operate. So there is a lot to take away from that. First of all, that mystery man that we see at the very beginning is none other than Al-Assad. Now, it gets confusing here because we also find out that Al-Assad is working with Zakaev, but not Imran Zakaev. As we found out in the previous cutscene, they say this. Enjoy the tea then. Zakaev wants Barkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat with Macmillan. Hold the fucking phone! So, Price just said right there that I almost buried him in Pripyat. This is a reference to the Call of Duty 4 mission all gillied up. That means in this universe, that mission also takes place. But Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. So we find out that this is not Imran Zakaev that's doing it. It's actually his son, Victor Zakaev, who is working with Al-Assad. And that is the story of Spec Ops. So that is all the tie-ins. And I didn't even mention that Kate Laswell there also mentions General Shepard. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. What exactly is this about? So that with General Shepard is a pretty much tie-in to every single character previously in a Modern Warfare game. Except for Yuri. That's the only one I couldn't find from Modern Warfare 3. And with this, I think I've pretty much answered every question there is revolving around the ending. If you have any more, feel free to ask them down in the comments. But the big takeaway here is there are so many tie-ins to previous Modern Warfare games. And I think that there is a lot more to look at here. And I do have many theories, including Ghost or Simon Riley that he puts down on the table there, including this game actually potentially being linked to other games like Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3 in other ways. And if you'd like me to explore those, all you got to do is hit that like button. It shows me that you enjoy these type of videos and I can continue them in the future. But as always, guys, if you did enjoy, I appreciate it if you hit that like button. You can let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on everything Modern Warfare, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn notifications on. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making this too hard.